What's up video? This is what's up video. What's up everybody? This is the video two in the CSS positioning part two. It's a two video series. Okay, it's not even a series much. It's just two videos about it. So in the first video, we looked at static and relative positioning, and that was relatively easy to understand. It's nothing too heavy right there. But today we're going to be talking about absolute and fixed positioning. So let's jump into the code. I am, uh, just as a refresh, my DOM looks like this. I have a, a paragraph, and in that paragraph I have a span around one of these words, and I called that word with a class of me. Uh, this div is called dad because it's my parent element, and this div is called granddad because it's, it's another ancestor element. Okay, let's look at Absolute positioning. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the background on there pink so we can see what I'm doing Okay, see I'm here uh, I'm Vin and I am gonna make my position Absolute and now when I do this I'm gonna save and look what happened my uh, All of the words just compacted right on to each right onto each other right there and what happened is when you take an element and declare that it's an absolutely positioned element, it is just like the effects of it uh, in terms of its dimensions are ripped outside of the DOM. The other elements around it flow as if it's not if it, as if it was not there. And also, let me change the background pink so you can see it better. It notice that it is on top of its brothers, right? In terms of those things that are around it that float, it, they've just collapsed right under it, but it's on top it, it, because it's absolutely positioned. Now, I did not yet declare a directional statement, a directional property. So we know that by default it's auto, but let me show you top, zero pixels, and save. We can see here that me, the pink element has jumped all the way to the, to the top of the window. Now, why did that happen? Well, because when you declare a directional property on a absolutely positioned element, it will be positioned relative to its nearest parent with a declared position statement. Now, we don't have one of those. So, if you do not have, or is it, if there is none, it will be declared uh, relative to the DOM, uh, the, the document, right? So in this case, I told, I told it top zero. That means it's going to be no pixels from the top. It's pretty easy. Watch left, uh, left 10. See? 10 pixels from the left. That makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab my dad element. Actually, let me take, uh, I'm going to go to dad and I'm going to go to granddad. Grand dad. And padding 50 pixels and back. Light. I can't spell. Okay. Um, there we go. I made my granddad 50 pixels of padding and a light blue background so you could see what's going on here. I'm going to make granddad position relative. And as soon as I do that, we can see that the absolutely positioned child, me, I become relatively positioned to, or absolutely positioned relative to the nearest parent that has a, a declared position, whether it's relative. Uh, absolute or fixed, not static, because static is the default, so it's basically like not declaring anything. So, if I go to my dad here, and I tell him to be positioned, oops, caps lock, uh, or E-L-A-T-I-V, okay. Look at that happen. Now, it's jumped from granddad, who's still positioned relative, uh, to my dad, who is now positioned relative. And that is important to note that it's your nearest ancestor, right? So if dad's position relative and granddad, it's not going to be granddad. 
it's going to be dad because he's, he's closest to me in terms of my ancestry. That's cool. Let me show you a few other things. If I go to me again and I say, I already know that I'm top zero and left 10. If I go right, what's going to happen if I declare myself both left and right? 10 pixels. Boom, goes all the way across. I'm going to move, take a position away from dad so you can have a better view of this. Look at that. I'm 10 pixels from the left and I'm stretched. So I'm 10 pixels from the right. I'm going to put bottom on here too. Bottom of uh, 10. And you can see it's just stretching them out. So it's an interesting thing that you can actually stretch out elements instead of just saying, you can, instead of declaring their height and width, you can use an absolute absolute statement along with the directional statements to kind of stretch an element out to where it's just like like a canvas right stretching it out to cover and, and fill the dimensions um, of its nearest positioned declared uh, ancestor in this case granddad weird right cool okay so next I want to talk about fixed position elements I'm going to make another element here, just down here, div, and I'm going to style it inline. I know you're probably like, oh, inline style, you're such an idiot, but I don't care. Watch. Uh, top, um, 2000. Nope, not top, height. And uh, I'm going to get background. Light. Lime is fine. We'll do lime and width uh, five pixels. <laughs> I need to make it. Okay. All right. Now what I've done is I've just made a really tall div so that I can scroll. That's really all I've done. So that's why it's forgivable that I did it in line because it's just weird, like one-off kind of thing. Uh, don't judge me. Okay, you can judge me. I don't really care. So here's what we've got going on. We got a really tall div so I can scroll. I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to go to me, and I'm going to change my positioning from absolute to fixed. Duh. And take all these, um, took all the directions off too. So similar to the absolutely positioned element, the fixed element uh, causes the causes the things around it to collapse as if it had no dimension, no height or width. So when I make it fixed. Uh, notice that the other elements go right under it as well. It's kind of pulled out of the of, of the flow of the DOM, and even more than absolute in that we can uh, like the the whole rest of the DOM will just scroll right past it. And uh, again, notice the siblings that collapse under it. They're not on top of it. They're below it because the fixed uh, element gets the it's, it's gets on top. It's just on top. Now notice that I have granddad is positioned relative. Right, so if it were similar to the absolutely positioned elements that rule there, me I would end up uh, if I declared top ten, or I'll do top zero. If I declare top zero, if it was similar to the absolutely positioning statements, I would go right next to granddad, like we saw with with absolute positioning. But let me show you this. I'm right at the top of the page. Now the reason for that is that a, a fixed position element will never respect any of its parents, ever. It's always positioned fixed relative to the document window, okay? Not even the DOM, not even the body or the HTML element. I'm talking about the window, and that's a really big distinction to make. Now, because of that, we can just scroll on past it. Now, what's interesting is when I did not declare a, a a directional property it just floated it just floated where it was and didn't really move and this is kind of how we do like those menus like a shopping cart where you scroll and it, and it it's still is still staying there or watch this I can do top zero left uh, left zero pixels right zero pixels and height uh, 60 pixels and look at that I got a I got a fixed header and everything floats right under it and this is like my logo and all that cool stuff. And that's how you do website tricks. Hmm, I like those website tricks. Okay, so that's it for the position and property. There's other things to be aware of, like you can have inherited or initial. And another new one that will be coming up is gonna be, actually that's the display. I was thinking about, I was thinking about um, 
Flexbox, that's a display property. So that's positioning in a nutshell. In two videos, about, about 10 minutes each or so, uh, I hope this is good for you guys. I hope that you understand something from this and whatever, and hope you have a fun time. Please show your friends or share it on your social networks. This one guy shared a video of mine on the Google Plus, and uh, it was really cool. He got a lot of people found the video and it was helpful to a lot of people and it really made me happy. So if you found this explanation of crap uh, beneficial, please share it with everybody that you know, including your mom, uh, or I will, and that might just be awkward. So love you much. Bye.